medical report. Sir Eustace, your current physical and mental state is of great concern. There are several signs of hermetic decompensation. We'll have to ask Watson about that. The last time that we met, your eyes were bloodshot and your skin was tinged with yellow. There is a particular odour from your breath that is common in those suffering from liver damage. Then there are the lung abscesses that we have discuss discussed. The leg cramps that you have described to me are caused by an, by an alteration to the nervous system, which in turn is caused by an excess of alcohol. That includes the tremors. Your liver seems excessively hard at the time of your examination, which is a sign of an evolving um, cirrhosis. There are also signs of ascites fluid in the peritoneal cavity, which are evident with your swollen stomach. The pain beneath your left rib indicates a pancreatic malady, which may lead to fatal and fulminant pancre uh, pancre panc pancreatitis. Your condition may pose a risk to others. Your excessive alcohol consumption lowers your self-control and heightens your aggression. I'm available to help you with this problem. There are a number of treatment options. I'll have to ask about that. A medical report found inside the morning room safe, which states that Sir Eustace Brackenstall endured poor health. He suffered an addiction to alcohol and nervous disorder and a nervous disorder. Antique coins, possibly of value, but they're scattered without care. Goes to the uh, trunk. It is common practice to keep one's valuables in a safe behind the painting. It should not really pose a challenge for a criminal. Hmm. Which go which furthers the theory that that uh, the the, uh, the, the that uh, they're being framed for something, and someone else did it. Oh, what a horrible thing to have happened! Can I ask about the health then? Oh, there's a history of violence between the two. Well, Sir Eustace's doctor speaks of his violent behaviour. Yes, Sir Eustace was an extremely violent man. A detestable human being, to be more precise. It is true that he once threw a decanter at me, and all because I dared to stand up to him in defence of my mistress. Sly devil. God forgive me that I should speak of him so now that he's dead. But a devil he was, if ever one walked the earth. We met him in only 18 months ago. She'd only just arrived in London. Yes, it was her first voyage. She'd never been from home before. And one eye with his title and his money and his false London ways. If she made a mistake, she has paid for it, if ever a woman did. She doesn't have any friends here, so it was especially hard for her. Hmm. So, she has a motive, certainly. Don't think so, just Teresa. Hmm. She'll have to consider this. Well, have I finished up there now? I haven't, apparently. Is there anything else, then? Anything else in the safe? No, because it's gone green. So that, and because the T doesn't pop up for the tech division, I don't think that's going to be any more relevant. Is it? Ooh, aha, another table. This photograph of Lady Brackenstall and her maid Teresa was taken at a port, but which one? Any way of opening it and finding out? Ah. Rock of Gibraltar, the Adelaide, uh, Adelaide, 1893. So the lady and her maid came from Australia a year and a half ago on this ship. Makes sense. We're stealing the picture. Right. Pair those together. Acquaintance acquainted with a sailor. Lady, ladies acquainted with some. Lady Bragginsaw married Sir Eustace shortly after arriving in England and remained at home during that time. There is little possibility that she or her maid are acquainted with anyone in the country. Oh, that is a question. Uh, I lean towards that at the moment, but we'll see where that goes. But I think we'll wait and see based on see if any further evidence should change that because right if she's got no acquaintances it's got to be these two 
It's like if, if she knows no one, it must be these two. If, however, she knows knows someone else, it could be either, and then it could be they are also well, they're obviously also a suspect. Hmm. Picture. Sir Warthen Brackenstall. Oh no, I didn't want to talk to Lestrade. Ugh. What do you know of Sir Eustace's reputation for violence? What do you know about Sir Eustace, Inspector? What was his reputation? A charming man when sober, but an absolute demon when he was drunk. In such moments, he was apparently capable of anything. Why, once he splashed fuel on Lady Brackenstall's dog and set it alight. Another day, he threw a decanter of wine at Miss Wright's head. Hmm. The alcohol seemed to madden him. Mm. To the point that we were forced to intervene several times to avoid a scandal. Yes. Do we have another one? Violent behaviour. So Eustace was violent towards his wife. Yes. Not entirely sure that's a, that was a much of a question. Criminals identified. Oh, picture. No, nope, picture. Lord Brigham Brackenstall. Lord Ramsay Brackenstall. Hmm. You should examine the body of Sir Eustace Brackenstall. But, uh, you're the doctor. So, Watson, what have you learned from examining Sir Eustace's body? Well, I can confirm that the death was instant. Sir Eustace was facing his attacker when he received the blow to his head. There are no other apparent injuries. Alright, okay. Let us walk around. Sideboard and another picture. Let's examine the body. Barefoot. He had therefore been in bed and did not have time to fully dress. Stick. Quite a large stick. A formidable weapon. Indeed. Head. The head was cracked with the force of the blow. To poke that up. must be the murder weapon. Are we sure? Guessing so. I play scraped. It is covered in blood. Sir Eustace might have struck his head upon it while falling from the blow. That is one possible explanation. Hmm. Right. Blood on the side of him. Ah, so it's probably going to allow us possibility of he slipped and fell. Hmm. Or, what I think is far more likely is the poker. But I may have to more thoroughly investigate. But it would be good. I'd, it'd be helpful to investigate the poker a little more than this is probably possibly what did it. That must be the murder weapon. Mantelpiece. Oops. The cut bell rope. That the bell rope was cut by someone taller than me. Oh, I see. Okay. Why would yeah, I don't think thieves would do that. There'd be no point to it, would there? Right, so. And we have the sideboard, of course, where apparently where they allegedly took the silver. Hunting rifle. Or lavagander. An empty silverware box. It appears that the intruders have stolen the contents. This candlestick is valuable. It is interesting that it was not also stolen. 
Yeah, so they're throwing a lot of hints at us that it wasn't the the Randalls. These wine bottles are expensive and mostly from France. And of course, you'd probably nick those even if you weren't going to sell them, wouldn't you? You'd assume for the thieves. The hunting scene. Of course, the chair. Ah, the bell rope. Sailors not. This rope was handled by the murderers. We need a scent hound to follow their trail. Toby! <laughs> right. Uh, this is the chair that Lady Brackenstall was tied to. Okay, so that's why whoever it was took the... Ah. That's why that was cut down. You wouldn't want to pull it, admittedly. Are there any... Hmm. So, assumably, someone climbed up onto the mantelpiece to cut, it, to cut the rope. A fur trader's cabin. And then... Glasses. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible bees wing. There is beeswing at the bottom, as if the wine had not been decanted before being poured. This glass has some wine traces, but no visible beeswing. It is rather strange hmm. that only one of these glasses has dregs of beeswing inside it, while the other two are clear. A decanter standing next to the open bottle. Hair hmm. Right, so assumably then we can say that there weren't three glasses. That that the weren't three three people drinking then. Or Yes. So there were either two and then poured into the third, or there was two and then a third person came along and had a drink. Which again if you're gonna be the three criminals celebrate having a celebratory drink, you'd have them all at the same time, wouldn't you? I now have grey hair. Grey hair! Uh, right. So, sailor's knots, though. Antique hunting weapons. Hmm. So, whoever did... It's like, whoever... Oh, there's still something to examine, is there? Is there a bottle? Chateau Calon Ségur. French wine. Grand Cru. Brilliant. So, if it's sailor's knots, if that's what they're kind of pressing with that, and it makes me obviously they're going to they're pushing towards the fact that it was a sailor who did it. Hmm. The death was instant. Right. Hmm. Two things to ask about. We should ask them. Ooh, another picture. A deer hunt. A fur trader's cabin. You like hunting then? The hunting? Ooh, door. Door. This door leads to the upstairs bedrooms. Apparently the criminals did not venture there. Um hmm. Well they only came into this room. Yeah. It, it's the whole thing of like who whoever came and actually did it. Okay, let's think about this then. Whoever came and... Whoever came and did this wasn't a thief, because they only came to this room, and even in here, there's still a lot of valuable things left. So it wasn't for theft. So theft, is, so they weren't thieves. Secondly, it is highly probable that they were known to Therese... And I think this is where we fiddle with the little uh, reductions. Oh dear. Uh, no, no, not here. This is where I'm going to switch to the sailor because the person who did it didn't come as a thief. Kind of already thought that. Um, but attached to that, it's someone who knows how to do good knots 
and who has the agility and dexterity to get to stand on that mantelpiece while cutting the thing. Poss so leans towards a sailor and considering it wasn't thieves and yet both Teresa and Lady Brackenstall are saying it was uh, um, saying it was um, there was thieves. They obviously know the person who did it. So I'm going to go acquainted with a sailor. Right, so let me go back to the clues. So we put the two glasses and the B-swing. So there were three people. One of the three probably prepares wine with B-swing. Or there were two people drinking wine out of these glasses. The remaining glass with the B-swing consisted solely of the dregs from the other two glasses. Um, I think if you have three... Because I'm guessing if you have three... It says, yeah, it must have been the Randalls. It wasn't. I'm fairly sure it wasn't. So we got the two. Random ideas slowly piecing together. Can I put those together? No. Hmm. Right, let us go and ask them about the drink. Ah, Lestrade's moved. Interesting. Lord George Brackenstall. Can I ask them about the glasses? Uh, there were three glasses on the table. There are three glasses on the dining room table. I was wondering if... Oh, I forgot. When I came to myself the first time, each of them had a glass in his hand. They might have been a father and his two sons. They talked together in whispers, and then they left. Your ladyship? Hmm. How could you tell it was a father and two sons? Maybe the way they talked, but she said they whispered. And didn't... Baron Linden Brackenstall. And didn't give us any... Wo the Brackenstall family seems rather austere. Hmm. So, I would say that she's lying. Right, Inspector Lestrade. I've searched outside for footprints, but had any luck. I've thoroughly examined that. Apparently there's still more to investigate in this room. 